Welcome to your Barbados Today evening news update for Friday, September the 21st. Thanks for joining us. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Topping the news at this hour, the Central Bank of Barbados is launching an investigation into claims that the banking sector is breaching regulations by conducting insurance business. During today's monthly meeting with the Barbados Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center, which was addressed by Governor of the Central Bank of Barbados, Cleveston Haynes, some members of the organization complained to the official that commercial banks were threatening their market by conducting the business of insurance. Governor Haynes, who warned banks against dictating to customers what insurance companies they should use when making transactions with the banks, pledged to probe the matter. Whatever we do is I will have to in investigate uh, what you've drawn to my, my attention. Obviously, there's a reason there, and ultimately it's really protecting, or almost protecting the positives. Um, I, I understand your concern, but our role is to protect the depositors and their, their restrictions in terms of what they can do. So I, I know that in some instances they may abuse agents. The, the point here is that what you don't want is for someone to go into a bank and mandate that you must use firm X or firm way in relation to insurance. And I think that's one of the reasons why restriction, restriction is in place. In other news now, there's no need to stop investing in Barbados. Vice President and Country Head of Royal Fidelity Barbados Limited, Julian Nunes, is urging investors not to hold back amid the prevailing uncertainty as government restructures its debt. She contends that once the debt restructuring process is complete, investors will be able to move forward without the threat of a debt default hanging over their heads. Nunes was addressing the annual Royal Fidelity Investor Forum at the Hilton Resort on Thursday under the theme, Proceed with Caution, Investing in an Uncertain Time. As investors, we need to ensure that we position ourselves appropriately, not just for today, but for tomorrow. And so our message to you is don't become immobilized by fear or uncertainty. The important thing is to stay diversified and focus on your long-term goals. On this International Day of Peace, leading criminologist Kim Ramsey is reiterating fears that gun violence in Barbados remains an epidemic. Ramsey, a senior officer with the Department of Criminal Justice and Research, voiced her concerns today at a special event celebrating the day hosted by the St. Michael Center for Faith and Action. She told education officials and school children gathered at the St. Michael's Cathedral that it is far too easy to get a gun in Barbados and as a result, too many people resort to using guns to settle conflict. It is a bit limited gun. It's fueling in violence in our society. Because, uh, because it is so easy now to take up a gun and shoot somebody when there's a conflict, as opposed to saying, you just walk away, cap on their head, and come back. When I get home again, that should be. That is a common response that we hear from persons because there is that availability. So we recognize that that is a challenge in our society and it is something that we must address. Meanwhile, Minister of Youth and Empowerment Adrian Ford is determined to keep violence out of the nation's schools. As part of efforts to stem the problem, he noted that more guidance counselors have been placed in schools and security officers on public transportation and in other locations where students congregate. Ford also highlighted the issue of cyberbullying. He says it's an issue which must be urgently addressed. Be careful of the violent internet-based video games that have grown in popularity as cyber technology becomes more sophisticated. These can influence one's behavior. Do not carry guns, knives, or other weapons to school. I have said many times. We need young people to put down, even our schools, the weapons of destruction. In other news this Friday, an outpouring of grief this evening as family, friends, and the fisher folk community packed the Emmanuel Baptist Church to say farewell to slain fisherman Stephen Molly Small. At the emotional service, his daughter Chantel Small described her father as the ideal dad. To the few that he helped most, my dad was a lover and a friend. 
He loved to drive around the countryside with people who he loved in the van and just go and eat and have a good time. Laugh, talk, drink, have fun. Say his children, my dad was our hero. He could do nothing wrong. He was just always there, you know? In every situation, every graduation, any problem you had, you just call daddy. As a man of the house, my father was a provider and a friend to his children who took his job very seriously and got up every day, rain, our son, in sickness and in health and went to work to make sure that those around him were cared for. Even those who were his family, everywhere a pastor, but if you needed to go there, you know to show Molly. In tribute to Molly, Minister of Maritime Affairs Kirk Humphrey announced that the Minister's Award for the Fishing Sector will be renamed the Stephen Molly Small Award. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. Welcome back with news from the region now. The 22-year-old Trinidad and Tobago National, who has been charged with attempting to steal an American Airlines aircraft at the Melbourne Airport in Florida, wanted to use the aircraft to harm himself. This was revealed at court proceedings held at the Brevard County Jail today. Nishal Sankat was charged with burglary, trespassing and grand theft. He was granted bail on the first two charges, but not on the charge of grand theft. As a result, he will have to stay behind bars. Meantime, U.S. authorities are continuing investigations. Police in Florida are trying to determine what 22-year-old Nishal Sandcat was planning to do after he boarded a commercial airliner undergoing maintenance early Thursday morning. If he was a student pilot from the area, he would be familiar with the airfield. Authorities say the student pilot drove to the curb outside the airport around 2 a.m. and left his car running. He then hopped a barbed wire fence and boarded an American Airlines plane sitting near a hangar. The uh, individual was confronted as soon as he uh, was on the uh, aircraft. The employee uh, who was on that aircraft actually took the appropriate action and escorted him off of the, the aircraft. But after he was dragged from the plane, he broke free, running back toward the jet. Soon after, police took him into custody. Within two minutes of creating a problem, we stopped this guy from getting in the air. This is only the latest security breach involving a commercial airliner. Last month, a luggage handler died after taking control of an empty jet at Seattle Tacoma International Airport. He conducted a number of dangerous maneuvers before crashing. Sancat from the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago was studying in Florida on a visa. He was not armed at the time, but police searched his car for explosives before towing it away. And on the international front, UK Prime Minister Theresa May has disclosed that negotiations with the European Union are at an impasse after a disastrous summit where her Brexit plan was largely rejected. Today, May struck a defiant tone while delivering a statement from Downing Street in which she called for the EU to respect the British position and the result of the June 2016 referendum. Throughout this process, I have treated the EU with nothing but respect. The UK expects the same. A good relationship at the end of this process depends on it. At this late stage in the negotiations, it is not acceptable to simply reject the other side's proposals without a detailed explanation and counter-proposals. So we now need to hear from the EU what the real issues are and what their alternative is so that we can discuss them. Until we do, we cannot make progress. In the meantime, we must and will continue the work of preparing ourselves for no deal. 
And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbellstoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We are also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Now, you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic weekend.